Today's video is going to be a little different. It's just going to be a brief overview of cross compiling in Gen 2. One of the things that make Portage brilliant is the fact you can add cross compiling support directly to Gen 2's um, e build system, which makes it a hell of a lot easier compared to most distributions that I find. Now, to do that, we need to e merge the package called CrossDev. So, verbose ask CrossDev and it's going to pull this in for us. Let's know that now. Most people have a Raspberry Pi, so we'll build to that example. What we would do is cross dev hyphen hyphen stable. That pulls in a stable tool chain. By default, it always puts um, testing packages because that's usually what you're doing with this. But if you're making it for, say, a binary host or something like that, um, which we'll do in another video. Stable is probably be the way to go. And then we set the target with T, and then we put in the tuple. The tuple is basically the arch you're using. Let, let me show you. So you do for a Raspberry Pi AA arch 64 unknown Linux GNU. So that would be the standard one. Now a good trick to do when doing this is to find a stage free of the um, architecture you're building for. Look in the uh, slash etc portage make a big file and look at the C host to see what gen to it's set in. That's probably the easiest way to do it. You're always going to get it right. So we'll hit enter there and now it's going to run and build this. So now our stage is complete. It will build the uh, system into a directory under user, which is the turtle name. So it will be a cd slash user aa arc. And you can see that we're there. Now, say if you did something like MIPS, it would be MIPS unknown Linux GNU, etc. etc. You get the idea. Basically, what's inside here if we ls is it's basically a system inside your system and even better is if we ls etc voltage we'll see that all of our settings are now included in here so let's do some tidying up of this so if we do a nano uh, etc as you can see i've left off the thing let's do this properly so you can see so it'll be slash user slash arc you um ARC user unknown at Linux GNU slash etc voltage make config and then we can see here we don't need to be touching many of these settings just a couple um, the main one we need to do is remove the minus PAM it's been replaced in later versions once it comes out of testing it's not needed nowadays and I recommend taking away the testing flag for now unless you need it for a certain reason just keep your profiles on stable and here you can change your C flags if you needed to so if you had a low um, if you had a different machine you could change the O2 sorry different machine if you had so if you had a machine that had a low cache um, CPU you might find using optimized level OS which is optimized for size better than O2 but we're building for a Raspberry Pi yeah? a nice fast one we don't need to O2 is good everything else here is just default settings that we need so you don't really need to bother with that okay so your cross compiler is built configured how do I build a package well that is easy what you do is cross dev sets up a wrapper for emerge with emerge hyphen and as you can see if you hit tab you can see there is now an art 64 unknown linux gnu which is basically an emerge wrapper which will cross compile for us which makes it pretty simple so but before we do that we need to set up profiles to match so this is where it gets a little confusing and this is why this is just a, an overview of how it works so you can see how easy it is and I'm going to link documentation 
but we are going to change the profile and to do that we run portage underscore config root equals slash user slash arc 64 unknown Linux GNU and then as we normally switch a profile e select profile list and now you can see it's showing us all the profiles we can use now tw uh, 23.0 profiles aren't stable yet we're just in the migration progress so let's look for one that is in the 17s uh, I my Pi is just going to be used as a server so I'm going to stick with one up there default Linux that one just there you'll know your system better than me you pick the one that works for you so I click set one now if I list again you'll see now it's starred there so now when I run emerge arch like that verbose ask and then let's pick a program let's go for nano apps editor nano and uh, let's go for nano so app editors nano you can see there it's going to build all the dependencies and it's going to place it inside slash user GNU for us which makes it easy right okay so that's done if we um, look into slash user arch unknown bar cache bin packages we're going to see that we've got all our bin packages save automatically there under the let's put an ls in front of that as you can see we've now got our bin package there ready to use and then we can send that over to our bin host server or just directly send it over to the machine and install it as a binary package which means you don't need to wait for that slow machine to build anymore it's a hundred times better than this cc you get less bugs and yeah and of course cost dev isn't a perfect solution there are other issues but it's pretty damn fast and it's pretty damn good it's um it's definitely one of the ways to look forward to now another thing you're probably going to ask is how do i build an entire system well that is pretty easy as well we do our emerge system and um, emerge arch the both ask and then we add a one to this you need to add the one shot at system and you see there it is going to build all the packages in the system and that gives you yeah an entire system based for the C flags that you wanted for your device without even having to use the slow machine and wait in months. As you can see with Nano, that took me seconds, even in the sped up version. If I did that on my Raspberry Pi, I'd be looking at a good couple of hours. So, yeah, I'm not going to run this today, but you've got the idea. All I've had to do is press yes and away I go. But I'll, again, like I said earlier, I'll leave some links in the um, description that you should follow to grasp this a little bit better but this is just an overview to show you how easy cross-compiling actually can be all right see you on the next one